five drivers settle themselves down on the grid. Ladies and gentlemen, the drivers wait on the grid. Cadet Honda, this is the seventh year that has been part of the MSA British Kart Masters Grand Prix. The prizes, the GP plate and Oculus Rift and Touch Virtual Reality System for the winner. Set the tyres to the top three. And the winners of this event Stephen Prentice in 2011, Luke Wooder in 2012, Rory Hudson in 2013, Mark Kimber in 2014, Kieran Jeremy in 2015, last year's champion, Harry Thompson. And as we watch and look at the assembled grid, we can see that we have a couple of contenders. So, Cart Mechanic Bingo, if your mechanic has any one of the following seven items, if they have their radio earpiece in, they need to check, check radio earpiece. Do they have their receiver around the back by their backside? Do they have their team T-shirt stroke tight-fitted jacket? The T-shirt must be tight. It cannot be baggy. It must have the team logo on it. Do they have the mechanic shorts, which are very tight above the knee. They must stop above the knee. They must be very tight at the bottom. They must have their team logo on them. Do they then have element number five? Some very expensive, ideally extremely brightly colored trainers. And then they have their apron, their team logo on the apron. Do they have their mechanics tan? We'll check that. And there go the balloons. Straight into the grandstand. Nope, they're up and away. So raising money for the Lynx and Knots Air Ambulance and everyone who has bought a ticket has got a ticket attached to the bottom of that. That is the release of the balloons. And we look down at the assembled grid. Pole position. Driving. Cart number seven. For next-gen motorsport, it's Archie Brown. Archie currently leading the British Cadet Honda Championship. On the outside of row number one, driving the number two cart for Virtus Motorsport, last year's Grand Prix runner-up, Oliver Behrman. On the inside of row two, driving cart number 70, one of six drivers doing both cadet classes. Driving for the next-gen team, it is Aston Miller. On the outside of row two, another next-gen motorsport driver, driver number 95, Southampton, Sonny Smith. On the inside of row three, driving cart number 12 for the Fusion Motorsport team is Koskun Irfan. On the outside of row three, leading privateer in the field, driving cart number 74, who finished fifth in last year's Grand Prix, that is Theo McCorris. Driver number 38, Alfie Rigby, currently 13th in this year's British Championship. He starts on the inside of row number four, and on the outside of row four, privateer driver number 64, 16th in the Grand Prix last year, it's Oliver Greenall. Row number five, number 63, Virtus Motorsports, cart of double duty driver Oliver Gray, and on the outside of row five, the number 36 next gen motorsport cart of Neo Phipps. Ambition Motorsports driver number 27, Zach Walters, starts on the inside of row seven. And Harvey Charter for the global karting team starts the number 29 cart on the outside of row number six. The number 73 Project One cart of Tristan Rennie. And his Project One teammate, the number 79, Kyle Casibante, who finished 20th in last year's Grand Prix. They share row seven. On row number eight, double duty driver, 
Number 23, Ollie Roller Motorsports, Arvid Lindblad. Arvid finished eighth in last year's Cadet Honda Grand Prix. And the O-Plate winner, the British Open champion for global karting, Lucas Ellingham. Daniel Ginchard and Ethan Simmons start on row nine. Ryan Willis and Josh McLean on row 10. Justin Bruard and Marcus Lucio on row 11. Sandro Ballesteros and Luke West in row 12. Declan Russell on row 13. The green flag at the back of the grid is raised. The drivers look at the gantry. Lights out. We are racing in the 2017 Kartmasters Grand Prix Finals. And it is Pullman Archie Brown who leads the field under the Litchfield Bridge for the first time. And out onto the banking. Drivers going very wide there. Try and get the best run onto the bridge. All 25 Connect Hondas safely through the first three corners and there's a collision at the back of the field with two drivers going up the banking but at the front it is Archie Brown who has the race lead it's the number 69 cart it was one of those Ethan Simmons but it's Brown in the number seven his teammate Aston Miller runs second then it's Alfie Rigby great start from Rigby he said that the key was overtake in the drivers parade he is doing just that. Joshua McLean in the number 76 car was also caught up in that first lap incident at turn number four. Miller holding on to second on your screens with the green and white BRK partner Rigby in third. Archie Brown completes lap number one. The lead of nearly three quarters of a second, but that will disappear very shortly in fact it has already disappeared because the slipstream effect comes into play brown heads the field over the bridge there flashing through turn number four is number two Burtis motorsport part of oliver behrman currently running in fourth place it's brown and miller make that brown rigby behrman and miller the top four then it is Oliver Greenall. Great start for number 64, Oliver Greenall. From eighth up to fifth, Oliver Gray is next. Then Harvey Charter in seventh place. Theo McCurris in eighth. Behrman sets off after race leader Archie Brown through the Mike Wilson complex. Then they flick left. Will that left hander they've just gone through be the scene of any last gasp desperation maneuvers before the afternoon is out? You can almost guarantee it. Change of lead, Behrman with help from Rigby moves into top spot. The field filed through now. Oliver Behrman knew he had to anything less than a win after finishing second last year would be a failure for Behrman in his own eyes. And he will be checking over his shoulder, signaling to Alfie Ribby, come on, let's go. Because he knows that Brown and Miller and the number 64 cart of Oliver Greenhall, they will all try and work as one to get up to the front. There is the Number 63 cart on your screen. Another the Virtus Motorsport machines. That is Oliver Gray, and he is chasing number 95 of Sonny Smith. That is for six positions. So the front five have broken clear. And it falls to Smith and Gray and Harvey Charter and Theo McCurris. Foscott Irpin just behind them to hunt down the top five. And there is a move from Irfan, who was the dominant factor in most of the heat races in that number 12 Virtus cart. Irfan won two of his four races. He had two wins and a second place finish. But he now finds himself down in seventh place. Behrman and Rigby continue to lead. Three tenths of a second in front of 
Archie Brown, Aston Miller and Oliver Greenall. The back of the pack. Off camera we have had a couple of little spins. These three drivers now chasing the two green and white predominant liveried machines. Brown, Miller and Brignol go under the bridge. Onto the banking and you can see Brown and Miller are closing in down the hill. Front five have got daylight between them. Aston Miller pushing Archie Brown, his teammate, along. Sets a new fastest lap, 68.45 seconds. All 25 drivers are still running. Luke Weston, Ethan Simmons, Zach Walters, Josh McLean, and Sandro Ballesteros have all uh, had grassy moments, but are still running. And the change behind the top five, that is not going to help. The chasing pack, Koskin Irfan, Theo McCurris, Harvey Charter, Sonny Smith, And Daniel Inchard trying to work together best they can, chasing these three. Nine minutes to go on to the start finish rate in front of the packed spectator grandstand, past the dummy grid, the panorama room, underneath the starting gantry, and then through the flat out right left chicane, the Bruno Ferrari band under the bridge, out onto the banking, steep climb uphill, but they're going flat out, and he's cadet on the cart, 50 miles an hour, across the bridge, hard right downhill. Perfect opportunity to overtake into this hairpin. Behrman knows that. Defends, Ricky tries to attack, the attempts to get away will be spoiled. Through the second hairpin now. Up the short shoot, past where the timing and scoring building used to be. Now into the Fullerton S's, left, right. Careful not to run out too wide on the curbs at the exit. They head down to the back straight. Another 90 degree right hander at Bobby Game Corner, which sets them up instantly for the Mike Wilson complex. Doubles back on yourself. You turn right then, left flick. And then into the final chicane, left and right. Over the curbs, but not onto the grass blocks to complete another lap. Behrman and Rigby are now half a dozen cart lengths clear of the number seven of Archie Brown. Brown has not got anyone to push him along because Miller and Greenall are another 10 cart lengths behind them. So if Archie Brown in cart number seven, the current British Championship leader, he is going to get on terms with the two leaders. He has to do it without any help. He's got Miller in that distinctive blue and orange crash helmet and green all trying to catch him to work with him. There's Aston Miller. Number 70 next gen motorsport team, the next gen team run by former double cart masters champion David Bell Chambers. So David, who does a lot of driver coaching, will have been coaching his drivers, just getting them into the mental frame of grind, what you need to do to win this race. Well, I'm not a driver coach, but I can tell them that what they need to do to win this race is they need to catch those two carts that are trying to break away and win. Instead, those two carts, Fairman and Rigby. Sonny Smith sets a new fastest lap. That is the number 95 car in seventh place. Theo McCurris is in sixth. But the gaps are growing, and I have to say, this is something of a surprise that the Cadet Honda race is so spread out because throughout the heats we have seen trains of carts running together. McCurris in that black and gold cart, the back of the camera shots coming into the Fullerton S's. He's got a head of Smith. Then there's a gap back to Koskin Irfan. Daniel Ginshard is working with Irfan. So is Harvey Charter and Lucas Ellingham in 11th. Oliver Gray is then 12th, followed by Arvin Lindblad in 4th. Tristan Rennie and Arvin Lindblad. Neo Phipps and Justin Bruard are next. The top 20 is rounded out by Ryan Willis, Carl Casabante, Declan Russell and Marcus Muzio. All 25 drivers still running. 
leaders have a 1.2 second advantage over Archie Brown and Brown is now falling back into the clutches of Miller and Greenall and that may not be a bad thing as McCorris breaks into the 1 minute 7 barrier 107.97 because if well, Whitby tried to wrestle the lead away from Beerman very briefly there Beerman was having none of it but if Brown does fall back into the clutches of Miller and Greenall they will work together the three of them he has so Miller will push Brown Greenall will push Miller, and 12 wheels, three engines, will have a lot more momentum than four wheels and one engine. The question is, do they have time? Because the gap to Behrman and Rigby is growing. It's now 1.6 seconds. Through turn number one, McCorris and Smith, they haven't given up yet either. There's still four and a half minutes to go, and if Behrman starts to defend, and he'll have to because Alfie Rigby is right there with him, and Alfie Rigby, he had a 23rd place finish in his third heat, but other than that, sixth in qualifying on Thursday, and then a sixth, a fifth, sorry, a second, a third, and a seventh for Rigby. So even though he is the lone bullet in the BRK Carting gun, as it were. He has been very quick, and of course, he's found a temporary teammate in Oliver Behrman, and they will work together while it serves both of them well to do so until the time ticks down to very little. Across the line, 10 laps now complete. And Rigby, well, he's got his nose cone resting on the rear bumper of Beerman's car. If he got any closer, he could quite literally pick his nose for it. The chorus again, a 67.181. Chasing pack now five strong because McCurris and McCurris has to turn around and thank Sonny Smith for that fastest lap because it is Smith who is pushing McCurris up to Greenall. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh now all in a line. Just under three minutes to go, and the gap is 1.8 seconds. And we've had a change, a brief change as Alfie Rigby off camera has grabbed the lead. Now Oliver Behrman. Alva Behrman grab it straight back. I think he might have done, but it's Brown, Miller, Behrman back in front. Rigby, the gap was 1.87, it's now 1.85, but McCurris and Green on the side by side. They don't need to do that, they've got to work together onto the banking. Time is ticking, two minutes plus a lap. McCurris again, fastest. 107.54. Behrman still leads. Rigby now has to start thinking when. When do I go? How long do I leave it? Do I wait until the last lap? Or do I go now? The gap is down to 1.7 seconds. So Brown and Miller, Greenall, McCurris and Smith are closing. Irfan is now eight, but the gap back to Irfan is four seconds. Of the drivers, still in with a shout. And I'll count the top seven as those drivers with a chance. Brown and Miller are doing double duty. Beerman putting all his carting eggs in the four-stroke on the basket, as it were. Round the banking, Alfie Rigby not made his move yet, but we are into the final 60 seconds. Who is going to become the 136th driver? Write their name on the Cartmaster's Roll of Honour, and it's breaking loose for third. Now, Brown needs to 
not get caught up in a battle. 30 seconds to go, the gap is 1.4 seconds, they are closing, and if they, if this group coming through the camera shot now just hangs on for another half a lap, then the leaders will start coming back to them because Rigby will undoubtedly try to make a move and Behrman will have to defend. And the minute Behrman starts to defend, he will slow down. And then Brown and McCurris has moved into fourth place. So, one of driver, independent run driver, Theo McCurris, they cross the line. Oh, with two seconds to go, they don't get the last lap board. This is the 40th and penultimate lap. So Rigby has two laps to go. And Behrman is taking a tighter line through the banking. Rigby, who's going to start moving around down the hill. Will we see Behrman jump to the inside? Will we see Rigby make a move? Not this time. Behrman takes the normal racing line. Will Rigby duck to the inside into the second hairpin? No. Alfie Rigby wants to wait as long as possible. Checks across. You can see Alfie Rigby just looking over at the grandstand just to see what his mechanic's doing. He'll have uh, been instructed or been given guidance to say this is how you do it. And he's waiting. The clock has struck zero. The last lap board is being unfurled. Oliver Behrman comes on to the start finish straight. Just under 1,500 metres away from a Cartmaster title that he lost very narrowly last year to Harry Thompson. Alfie Rigby will try and break his heart again. Behrman knows. Who's another one? And there's still one and a half seconds ahead. Down the hill, Behrman checks over his shoulder. He can see there's only Rigby there. Brown and McCurris are not going to catch them. It's going to be a scrap for third between Archie Brown and Theo McCurris. Unless something catastrophic happens. There goes Rigby. Rigby makes his move into the second hairpin. He dived out last minute and grabbed the lead. Beerman was caught napping. He wasn't expecting that move there. We're down to half a lap to go. Oliver Beerman, last year's runner-up, has to try and do something. Look for that left-hander. They're coming into the right-hander now. This next corner, is Beerman going to go over it? He can't because Rigby has got it. Rigby defends. He's going to slow himself down through the Mike Wilson complex. Beerman's got the run over the curve. Drag race to the line. Wheel to wheel. Beerman on the grass. Oh, my goodness me. Beerman gets it by four thousandth of a second. And Oliver Beerman turns second place last year into first place this year and Alfie Rigby did everything he could. The one thing he didn't do is he didn't drive Oliver Behrman clean off the track. And he has to, and Behrman just kept coming and coming and coming and he just got the momentum. You could see Oliver Behrman setting up Alfie Rigby through. I thought Oliver Behrman's gonna go with that left-hander. It's the type of corner that only Oliver Behrman thinks about making a move on and he show that he knows a lot more than I do. He waited and Alfie Rigby was almost suspecting that to happen because Alfie Rigby defended into that left-hander and that meant he was a little bit slower through the last chicane and Behrman just swung wide. He, and he, thought, he thought to himself, well, if I bend the chassis, I bend the chassis. He launched himself over that curb, got the momentum and is provisionally your 2017 Grand Prix Winner in Cadet Honda. The rest of the top ten, Archie Brown third for next gen. Then leading privateer Theo McCurris in fourth. Sonny Smith finishes fifth. Aston Miller, Oliver.